that we can pound rods, the neutron absorbing rods, down directly into the melted reactor, the core itself. Who's That's who's going to go in there and do well, that? Yeah. Right. Well, they do use boric acid, and they pour it into the uh, you know these meltdowns. But right. it has a limited effect. 600 pilots died from radiation yeah. sickness, but they spent 10 yeah. days dumping tons of boric acid and lead, folks, in case you don't yeah. know. But Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. And so there might be yeah. something about Yoshi saying there in that sense, right, where the boric acid, they never even tried that. They didn't. They, they, they put salt water on it, which was yeah. the worst thing you could have Well, we saw the one helicopter dropping a load over it, and the water blew away. They attempted. Yeah. They, you attempted. Know, they tried. They gave, yeah. they gave it up right away. Yeah. 600 died in Chernobyl. I didn't know that. That's huge. Yeah, there's a big graveyard of helicopters. Well, I always thought that uh, pure unrefined borax, it's uh, about 5% boron, uh, that would do a job, actually. You can just drop that in there. It's a lot cheaper than... Uh, you know, uh, extracting the... Uh, what what form would it be in, Yoshi? What form? Would it be powder? Would it be uh, uh, liquid? 20 mil, uh, 20 mil, 20 mil key laundry powder, basically. Powder, yeah. uh-huh. Just drop that in there. Yeah, the, the, uh, borax, borax powder. You can buy yeah. boxes in American supermarkets. It comes out of Death Valley. Uh, Ronald Reagan was a salesman for that. Oh, I remember so seeing those reruns long ago. Yeah, he got a few things right, and that was one of them. Yeah, so you know, just you just get that stuff out of uh, hundreds of tons and just drop it down there, and I think it would have a positive effect. That's Why right. haven't they tried the that results. with a, even one of the care. reactors? Just just tried it. I don't yeah. understand. Nobody tried it. So Harvard went to Chernobyl, but they never went to Fukushima. The Yale went to Chernobyl, they never went to Fukushima. The, uh, Berkeley and Stanford, MIT and Oxford all went to Chernobyl. None of them went to Fukushima. That's really a sure. very, very good yeah, point. Berkeley, very good yeah. point. Wow. Well, one of the reasons they didn't do it at Fukushima, because the truth is, as we found out recently with that uh, National Regulatory Commission memo, is that the meltdowns were gone. The corium led left, it either gone up into the air, okay, and it burned off, or it was uh, deep underground. So the notion that there was a meltdown going off in the containment chamber was a total fiction that we were fed for four years, more than four years, okay? The reality right. is there was, uh, you know, first, first, like, there's nothing inside. It's all gone, right? You were saying right. that like about week, yep. I think four? Yep. Week four, you were saying that. Long time ago. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why the, no matter what you pour in the reactor, it's not going to have any effect. You know, we we got to go chase after whatever is in there, in the air or underground. Happy so, hunting. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the problem we face. Yoshi Shimatsu and uh, Yoshi is in Thailand and Dana Durnford up in Canada. Okay, um, this issue of potatoes and insects and pine trees uh, all over the place in Japan is not coming to America and Canada. There's just no question about it. It's at least two years ago that I saw and reported on one story that said pine needles in conifers up and down the West Coast were showing signs of radioactive contamination. This is in the pine trees, which had uptaken the radiation from the rainwater into their pine needles. Now, don't forget also that within the first week after Fukushima began to blow, they measured radioactivity on the ground in New Mexico. And within two weeks, two to three weeks after Fukushima blew, they found radiation in the milk of dairy cattle in the state of Vermont. Okay? Get the there's nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. What you can do is take precautions in your home and make changes in your life and your lifestyle. And I would urge you again to go to that second banner at the top of rents and look at the bio superfood, the four most potent algaes out of over 1,000 tested by Dr. Michael Kiriak in an attempt to find something that would help the people who were exposed to to the Chernobyl radiation, and he found it, and it worked. He saved the lives of countless thousands of people, and that product is available for all of us to take to build our immune systems, but most importantly, we are electronic beings to build our frequencies up to an even higher level, which better defends and protects us against these kinds of terrible 
radioactive pollutants and toxins, which are going to be found in more locations all the time. Uh, Yoshi, anything to add to that? We're finding mutations, and this really... Well, I, couldn't agree. I couldn't agree with you. Yes, this is not an endorsement, but I can uh, agree with you more because, uh, you know, uh, if you're, you know, because uh, radionucleotides, especially see them in strontium, they, they mimic an iodine, for that matter, uh, calcium. And calcium. Yeah. And your, your body just makes this stuff so naturally that you're deficient in potassium and calcium. You're really opening the door for your body just sucking up radionucleotides. So, you know, they're out there in the environment. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm always, you know, I'm a, you know uh, I've worked on uh, avian influenza, SARS, you know, uh, years ago. And yeah. the strategy of my team, very innovative top biochemists, chemists, and microbiologists, was you fight. Uh, toxins in the environment, outside, okay, in the land, in your wall, in your garden, you know, uh, with your house, with your filters, you know, layer after layer of defense. The last place you want to fight a toxin is inside your body. So you got to avoid the ingestion. You got to have water filtration. It's, not, you know, it's really important that people start. You know, I think this is sort of the last moment before people who haven't invested in. Oh, piece of water filters, HEPA filters for your uh, yeah, houses yeah. to put the money there. It's not that much money, and it it's isn't. a lot of protection. And, Very much so. And the other thing is, you got to, yeah, I, I say within your house, based on what I saw in Colorado, you got to get some like lemon type, you know, there's many lemony cleaners. You add, just go out and buy some real lemon, you know, citric acid basically. Add that to the wash and the sponge, use rubber gloves, and you just, uh, wipe your house down. You got to get these particles off. It's good to buy a dose of meter. I think they're easier to handle than a guider counter to test all sides of your house for all the parts of your interior for uh, for any hot spots. You just want to uh, n- uh, knock out those hot spots. It's very important you do that, especially if they're, let's say, at a, uh, where you sit at your desk or whatever, where you're often frequent. You got to knock them out. So I think people got to just take the surveillance of radiation countermeasures. Very seriously, until we have some government that finally decide to do what has to be done. I mean, I don't know what they're waiting for, why they're promoting nuclear. They know nuclear's got to get shut down. I think the Department of Energy, you know, I think the experts know that this thing is, this technology is where it has done more damage, is well beyond its useful value than oh, oh, any other than oh, destroying yeah. the whole city. No, but no. They know. They know. Yeah, I agree. They're not acting responsibility. They're just sucking money out of that out of the uranium money, out of the ground, the whole that, and they don't know how to put it back. They don't have to do something about it. I don't this, know that. Uh, I think they they don't. Idaho. Yeah, yeah, they don't care. Uh, Dana, this have you come across any governmental agency or even a press release or a news release that sounds like they really care about helping the people? <laughs> Seriously, and I, I haven't seen one in nearly five question? years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got yeah. no answer, man. I, yeah. I I'm laughing. I, well, I only laugh when I can't hold it. Not, not one. And what did what did the EPA do in Boise to their again their their radiation station that they had there? They they uh, shut it down and packed all the instruments up in trucks and drove them away. They shut it down because it was reading too high. That's and, how they answered. They had 99 break, and then uh, they took yeah. the rest of them down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, uh, those 99 just broke, right. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, I got a good one for you. I was looking for maps of the, how many people and where they died along the coast of Japan mm-hmm. and cross-referenced that um, with, a, with a map of where the nuclear power plants is too. And so we had big deaths uh, around 400 kilometers of the coastline that they got recorded so far that I found. Mm-hmm. And uh, the deaths were down to no, Noda. There was um, 38 died way down in Noda. That's down in the south end of Japan. Mm-hmm. And then uh, as you come up, there's thousands dying all in each one of the prefectures and communities, big communities. And all the way up to Iwaki, A-W-A-K-I. That Iwaki. Was yeah, there was 310 died there. Yeah, Iwaki. Yeah. And yeah. so all the nuclear power plants along that whole shoreline, there's around 14, uh, three facilities, 14 reactors. They, they would all got smashed. They would have all had their um, infrastructure torn apart and destroyed. There was When you look at how much debris, I mean, that wave in some places was 40 meters high. 
Uh, and the garbage piles that it created were 20 meters high. And so there was some really uh, big tonnages. I can't remember what the tonnage was, 4 billion or something like that, tons. And that got radiated from fallout, too, on top of that. And that changed the subject. I just wanted to make that point that because that whole coastline, that, that tsunami went up to 10 miles in, it was considered, the earthquake itself was considered, I think, 7,000 times stronger than Christchurch in, in New Zealand. It was 1,000 times worse than Haiti on top of that. So the damage was throughout the country. We'd, and a lot of these power plants allegedly started melting down before the tsunami got there. And so we could have had more power plants throughout the country having problems. We know they had big problems on the east side or the west side for some reason. The west side is the inside, folks. The east side is on the ocean side. You're going yeah, to you're, you're right about the damage because uh, I, I was in Milwaukee, you know, and uh, they have a very, you know, the, the Jammy sounds are very complicated water main systems. But around the plant, all the water mains were knocked out. Yeah, there was no water there for a long time. The households were one of the reasons people had to evacuate. There was wow. no water out of the tap. So uh, further south in the city, the water mains held up because uh, it's a little bit further from the quake. Okay, but wherever the quake hit, the water mains were knocked out. And that really contributed, as you said, Dana, to the shutdown of these plants. I went up to uh, one off the coast of Sendai. You know, there's obviously problems there. Uh, there was, a, you know, there was leakage there. I, re, uh, you know, I recorded some leakage in the bay. Uh, people talked about a meltdown there, partial meltdown. But again, it was a total cover. On the day I was there, they had something like 50 journalists there. They wouldn't let me in, but they had 50 journalists there on a tour. And obviously, the publishing houses for those newspapers and magazines were getting paid money, you know, from the PR office of that Onagawa nuclear plant, uh, the Tohoku. Uh, 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 power industry. So obviously there was a lot of damage, and there's also a lot of secret nuclear sites I've talked about related to weapons production, weapons research, and weapons, a uh, nuclear Great weapons point. production. You know, plutonium. And I think one of those, up, uh, the thermal plant up in uh, Haramachi, uh, you know, there was that talk about the thousand or more bodies that were frozen at the Fukushima University Medical School. And from what I heard from locals, that there were, that, that that nuclear secret underground nuclear lab was completely wiped out. So it was probably nuclear workers. So we got more than just the nuclear plants. There's also a lot of hidden sites that the Japanese government won't report on. You know, it doesn't dare report because it's all illegal under Japanese law and international law. What this government. Until uh, March the 11th coming up of this year, when apparently all the Japanese journalists are going to unveil all kinds of amazing new data they kept hidden. I can't wait to see what, what that one is all about. Yeah. We know that's a PR story. Like you say, yeah, amazing but little. That's the problem. They're not going to come out <laughs> full force and show the real extent of this disaster. Well, and then the long-term effects and the sheer folly of uh, trying to restart nuclear power plants. You know, the enormous risk of you know, they can't handle the one. There's not enough emergency workers. There was no emergency response at all. So then they want to open new reactors in, you know, earthquake zones, tsunami zones. Quite insane. Well, it's uh, yeah, as if the, the species the species yeah. has a death wish. I don't know how else to phrase it. This is terminal madness yeah. of the end times. It terminal truly madness. is. Terminal yeah. Madness. Yeah, here's a here's a quickie. Don't forget, folks, to watch for the stories about the animals, the whales washing up on the shores that have starved to death. Uh, they literally can't find anything to eat. Here's a headline from E N E News: Sickened animals, unlike anything doctors have ever seen, washing up on the west coast. They're eating themselves from the inside. Cancers liver, pancreatic cancer, intestinal cancers, shutting them down. They're infested with parasites, and they are immune to all antibiotics. Unprecedented catastrophe to cause the loss of over 200,000 sea lions alone this year. It just gets worse and worse, and we've been telling you for five years, and you're finding no leadership whatsoever from any government, Japan, Canada, the U.S., nobody, nobody's talking about it. Yoshi, thank you very much, as always. Talk to you next week. And good luck to Dana. Hang in there. Yeah, hugs for everybody. Okay, thanks, Dana. Yeah, you too, Joe. All righty. And thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, a lot of information to absorb and think about, but it's all the real deal. And we'll talk to you in 21 hours. Take care.